Hello, my name is Aviva, and today I wanted to share with you a bunch of very popular books that I never plan on reading. Obviously, this could change in the future, but at the moment that I'm making this video, I really do have like less than zero plans of ever reading any of the books that are on today's list. So with that said, the reason that I actually decided that I want to make this video right now is because there's a very popular book call going around recently called Magnolia Parks, and everybody seems to keep like recommending this to me, and I feel like everybody who's recommending it to me like just does not know my taste because like this is the last book that I'd ever want to put myself through. I don't know too much about it, so don't take my word for it on like what it's actually about, but what I've heard is that it's some kind of like gossip girl London vibe about about, about a bunch of like very young 20 year olds or something like that, and it's just like toxic, angsty, tension filled, everything along those lines. Like these two people, they want to be together, but they can't be together for some reason, so they're just gonna like date a bunch of other people and make a bunch of problems and like make each other jealous and cheat on each other and everything along those lines, and it's just just, it's a ride. And even though that sounds very entertaining, the number one thing that I like to stay away from is cheating in my books. And that is literally like the first thing that everybody warns about this book is that there is a ton of cheating. And because everybody, like there's a lot of people out there who don't like cheating, then like, you know, that's the thing that people have been warning about. And that is something that I very much do not like to read. And therefore I very much appreciate everybody who's been, you know, warning about the fact that it's cheating. But also I don't understand why everybody keeps like saying like, oh, you should totally read Magnolia Parks. Like literally, I've been getting DMs, I've been getting comments, everything along those lines. And I just, I mean, obviously they just don't know my taste very well, but literally this is like the last book on earth that I probably would ever want to put myself through. I don't blame anybody who really like, you know, is enjoying the book. Obviously it's getting popular for a reason and supposedly it is a wild ride. So if that type of book is so like, is very much up your alley, then I totally understand why you're reading it. But it is like very not much up my alley, if that makes sense. So either way, I really do have zero plans on ever deciding to pick up this book, but who knows? Maybe Maybe something's going to change in the future, but I don't think that's going to happen. Either way, with that said, another book that I never really plan on reading that is actually very similar to Magnolia Parks from what I've heard about it is A Love Letter to Whiskey. So this is something that honestly, I can see myself possibly put like reading one day in like the very, very far future just to give it a try. But I really don't think that's actually ever going to happen because just looking at that book and knowing what it's about gives me so much freaking anxiety that like I just don't really ever want to read it. So it's one of those like right person, wrong time love stories. And it's very similar to Magnolia Parks in the sense that it's like these two people cheat on each other and they're cheating on other people to be together with the two main people at some point. And it's basically just like they go throughout their lives. Like, you know, they come in and out of each other's lives, like throughout the years. And it's just like never their right time or something like that. But they were like always meant to be together. I honestly like don't know too much about it, but basically everything that I've heard about the book sounds like something that really just would not make me very happy. So I don't really ever plan on on putting myself through that book either. But again, who the hell knows what's going to happen in the future? But really, I don't think that I will ever pick that book up. But either way, after that, another book that I don't really ever plan on reading is The Confidence of a Wallflower Duet. And I have heard a lot of very mixed things about this book. So either way, I wasn't very much ever like super intrigued by picking it up, even though I know that it's like an age gap with a single dad and like, you know, I don't know, some sort of like a bunch of a bunch of tropes that I have heard are, you know, very much up my alley. But supposedly it also does have a cheating in it. And it also ends on a cliffhanger that I spoiled myself for. And I don't really ever want to put myself through that sort of end. Ending, especially because I have heard that book too just feels like a very extended epilogue and it totally could have been like you know one book instead of a duet and I don't really like that vibe especially because like I'm always very wary about duets because of that sort of feeling of like they were just dragging it out to make two books and that's something that would bother me and then because I've seen so many people say that about this duet it just makes me feel even further like you know happy with the fact that I don't ever really plan on reading it so yeah there's a lot of reasons why I don't ever want to read this book and I I think I mentioned almost all of them. So this is definitely one that is on my radar. Um, that is on my radar to never read. Does that make sense? Either way, we're going to move on. Next up, another book that is not as popular, but I have seen it around a lot is this Balance series by, I think, Lucia Franco. And I might be saying that author's name wrong, but either way, I actually did want to read this book for a very long time because it's some sort of like forbidden coach to athlete sort of romance. And I had it on my radar for a while. And then I heard a couple of things about it. One is um, that there is cheating involved in it. I think that he either has a girlfriend at the time and 
things get very messy or maybe at some point like they cheat on each other I don't even know that it's like the details but I have seen a cheating and this book referenced together and therefore it went off my radar the second I saw that also I do know that these books are very expensive very thick and they're also not standalone or companion series or anything like that like I think there's like maybe I don't know at least three plus books in this series and they're all like $20 each and basically that kind of very much deterred me as well because I don't really want to spend that much money on a book and then when I heard cheating I'm like okay I'm done so basically I never do plan on reading this book either and then Another book that I don't really ever plan on reading, mostly because I heard that there is cheating in it as well, is this Stay With Me series. And I don't know the author, but it'll be on the screen. But either way, I wanted to read this book for a very long time. I forgot who had recommended it to me, but someone had specifically said like, oh, if you like the Addicted series, then you might like Stay With Me. And then if you liked like another series, I honestly cannot remember off the top of my head, but basically there were a couple of series that I really liked. And people are like, oh, if you like these couple of series, then this is basically like, you know, a book that would be super up your alley except I had someone warn me that in the second book, I think this is a trilogy, and in the second book in the trilogy, um, the main guy cheats on the girl at some point, and I hope that wasn't a spoiler, but either way, sorry, um, but either way, I have heard that there is cheating involved in this trilogy, and even though um, the idea of the book kind of stands on my alley, because I'm pretty sure it's something to do with like these two people who meet in some sort of like rehab facility for some odd reason, and they're just going to have like this very toxic relationship, but either way, um, it sounded like something that I'd want read except I don't want to read about cheating and if anybody like somewhat says that there is cheating in a book I just take it off my radar right away because I don't want to read about that so unfortunately I will never be reading this series but I have heard good things so I'm kind of sad that it does have that little instance in there because if it didn't then I probably would read it but either way after that another book that I don't really ever plan on reading but again this is something that I might change my mind on one day in the future but I have a feeling that that's never really going to actually happen is it still beating by I think Jennifer Hartman I'm told I should just I should just not say the author's name because I'm gonna have it on the screen either way but anyway um this book is very very popular and I've seen so many people say amazing things honestly I haven't really even heard any bad things about the book the issue is, is that I don't like the topic of the book basically this girl and her sister's fiance end up getting kidnapped together and then the kidnapper basically makes them fall in love with each other and then lets them go and now they have to deal with like you know the effects that happened of when they were you know kidnapped and in the fact that they fell in love with each other and that he is you know engaged to marry her sister and everything like that so I feel like that sounds very intriguing and very intense yet something that just wouldn't be up my alley because I don't like the ideas of emotional cheating even though like the circumstances makes it okay because of like how it went down and like they didn't do it on purpose or I don't even know I'm not gonna like put anything on there because I don't know actually how the book plays out but basically I don't really like the idea of the book even though it does sound like something that would be really really good and definitely like pull me in right away but I feel like you know it's just a book so I'm just gonna pass on it because I rather like not put myself through that so I don't really ever plan on reading this book and then another book that is very very popular recently is every summer after and I have seen a lot of people say that this is very similar to love in other words so first off the second that I saw that just makes me not want to read it because I personally did not like love in other words and this is supposedly just like a carbon copy of it but then on top of that I was warned that there is cheating on it so I think you get the idea of basically if I find out that there's cheating in a book I'm not gonna read it and I found out that there is cheating in this book so obviously I'm not gonna going to read it so basically I'm going to pass up on this book and I really have like zero feelings towards that like I don't feel bad about that whatsoever I am just going to pass so that is that and then another book that I feel like should be very obvious that I would never read because I've said it so many freaking times that I'm not a fan of this author but yet some, pe some people seem to like recommend it to me all the freaking time but either way that book is um, Book Lovers by Emily Henry so I have read um, you know the first book The Beach Read or whatever and it wasn't horrible but you know it was just like a four-ish star read for me at the time that I read it. I bet it would be like way less than a four stars now that I, because my tastes have changed. But either way, that book was okay. And then I read People Meet on Vacation and I realized that I just don't really like this um, like author's type of style. And I really hated People Meet on Vacation for a lot of other reasons other than that. And anyway, it basically made me decide that I never really want to read Emily Henry's books in the future, especially because I ended up seeing a lot of very specific reviews of what people didn't like about this book and all the things that I heard people say 
say are reasons that I know I would complain about. So that just furthers the fact and like makes me feel better about the fact that like I never really ever plan on reading this book. But if you were a fan of this book, because I know that it's very, very popular, then I'm very happy that you like it. But everybody has different tastes. And I just know that this book wouldn't work for my personal taste. So that is that. But anyway, another book that I never plan on reading that is very popular, but I feel like, you know, the, the hype of it has died down just slightly is Ice Planet Barbarians. And I feel like I am just not into like purple aliens or blue aliens or whatever it freaking is. But basically, um, this is supposedly just like a very smutty book about a bunch of aliens with maybe a human. I don't even know the dynamics of it, but basically I just don't really have any interest in reading it. So I'm going to pass, but, um, I'm very happy for people who are into that that type of thing. Um, anyway, another very spicy book that I don't really ever plan on reading is Den of Vipers. So this is actually a book that has come on and off my radar over time. And honestly, I don't know anything about it except for the fact that I don't really ever want to read it because I, I don't exactly remember the reasonings as to why I felt this way. But there were times when I saw a lot of different reviews about it that all just like furthered my feelings of like, oh, I don't really want to read this. Like, I'm pretty sure a lot of people said that it's just like all smut no plot which is something that I like to stay away from unless I'm specifically in a mood and I don't remember if this is like reverse harem or not but like either way I can't really like explain to you exactly why I don't want to read this but over time I have felt like I just basically don't want to read it so um, I'm just gonna pass on this like I don't have my reasonings but I just know that like I don't want to so yeah, that's it. <laughs> anyway, another book that is kind of similar to Den of Vipers is P uh, Promises and Pomegranate. So the thing is, is this is another one where I feel like one day down the road, I might change my mind on, but I don't think that's going to happen. And honestly, I don't even know what this book is about. But for some reason, like anytime I come across a specific review and then I see something that like I really know wouldn't work for me, I decide to just like quickly pass up on something. And this just happened to this book for a cup, like a couple of of times and I'm very easily swayed. It's like I'm easily swayed in reading a book, but then I'm also easily swayed in like deciding to not read a book. And I feel like this is one of those ones where it's like I just got easily swayed to like decide to pass on it. So I do plan on passing on this and I don't think I'm ever going to pick it up. But anyway, after that, this is more of like a classic popular book. It's not very like hyped up right now, but I decided to add it onto this list anyway, because for some odd reason, this recently came up when I was talking to someone, but either way, I don't really ever plan on reading Twilight. And I know that this is like a very old book, but it's also very popular. And my reasoning behind this is because when these books came out, I was just too young to actually read them at the time. Like this, these were the books that my older sisters were reading and I was like sneaking into to the movie theater to actually like watch the movies as they were coming out throughout the years and I somehow just like missed the trend of actually reading the books even though I had a couple of friends that were reading them even though we were like a little bit young for it but either way once I see a movie I don't really ever like going backwards and reading the book and because I've seen these movies like literally like millions and millions of times because I saw them when they were coming out and then I would rewatch them over and over again even though you know they're good but they're bad like they're just they're a comfort sort of a movie you know what I mean so either way because I'm so familiar with the movies, I don't really ever plan on going backwards and reading the book. And then very similarly to that is After by Anna Todd. So I feel like if I had come across um, this series when I was younger, like when these books were coming out and were actually very hyped up in the moment, I feel like I might actually have given them a shot. But then I saw the movies as they were coming out, not even realizing that they were a book, by the way, like I was watching them as they were coming out and I didn't even really like the movies. They were one of those movies where it's like, I just put them on to like waste time, but I'm not like actually obsessed with it. They were just like toxically entertaining and I feel like now that I know the storyline I would never be able to actually put myself through the book so I am kind of happy that I never actually like you know got invested in the book even though I do think that if I read them way back when it was it would be something that I would have obsessed over so anyway I don't ever plan on reading this series either and then after that, um, I did have a couple of books that I wanted to quickly share with you that are very much maybe. So maybe. So it's like, I never really plan on reading them, but these are ones that I think out of all the ones on this list, I might actually decide to change my mind on for some odd reason in the future. But at the moment, they're a no for me, but maybe that will change. But either way, the first book I have on that list is It Happened One Summer slash Hook, Line, and Sinker by um, uh, Tessa Bailey. And either way, I don't think that I would really 
like these books for a couple of reasons. First of all, I'm not a huge fan of Tessa Bailey's writing, even though I have heard that her books are very hit or miss, and I think that I've just read a lot of her misses. But for some reason, I've seen so much about these books, and I'm not really super intrigued in reading them. Like, I know what they're about, and I know that so many people love them, and they're just one of those, like, easy rom-coms that will, like, pull you in and just, like, give you a fine time. But for some reason, I have no interest in the storyline, and I think that I'm overseeing them. Like, I've seen them so many times that I feel like I kind of know the story already, so, like, I don't really have any interest in, like, reading it. And then on top of that, I'm not really a huge fan of the author. But for some reason, I think that, like, maybe I might possibly give these a shot, especially because I'm pretty sure that the first one might be made into a movie. Don't take my word for that, but I feel like I saw that somewhere. And I feel like before the movie comes out, I might decide to just, like, quickly read the book because I know that I'll never be able to read the book after I watch the movie. So I might decide to change my mind on that. But at the moment, I don't know. I just, I don't really think I'm ever going to read these books, but that might change in the future. Either way, after that, another um, book slash series that I don't think I'm ever going to continue with, but for some odd reason, maybe that will change in the future, is the Twisted series by Anna Hong. So I have read the first book in the series and I really didn't like it. I even own the second book. And after I read the first one, I'm like, I don't really ever plan to go to and read the second one. And then I've just seen like, you know, the next ones come out slowly, but surely like book three and book four came out after I read book one and already owned book two. And I've seen really good things about it. And I have heard that it does get better over time, but book one just really turned me off like so freaking badly for the series overall. Like I feel like I got the vibe of what they would be about. Even if the books got better, for some reason, I just feel like I don't know, it wouldn't be super, super on my alley. Like, I just was a little bit off on the writing style and the vibe that the, like, author gave off, like, for the books. And I feel like I just wouldn't love them. But, like, I don't know. I've debated this back and forth, and I feel like my final decision is to just, like, pass on them. But maybe that will change. Who the hell knows? Either way, after that, another series that I really don't think I'm ever going to read, but again, I might change my mind on, is The Zodiac Academy. And this is mostly because I have heard a lot of mixed things about this book. I know that, like, people are very very into it and like people are like very much like like die hard for this series like just the same way that people die hard for like you know the throne of glass series or things along those lines but i've heard some iffy things about it that just make me feel like i wouldn't be able to get myself into it especially now because i'm no longer a huge fan of like that this style of books and my reasoning behind this is first of all i've heard that the writing is very iffy and i feel like if i'm having a hard time convincing myself to want to read a book something like the writing style can easily like bother me right off the bat and therefore I feel like I would never be able to actually get myself into it if the writing was very hard to like you know get past sort of thing and then on top of that I also saw a lot of people say how like the two main characters are like twins and you can't really tell the difference between their styles like they sound very similar to each other and I feel like um you know that is something that would definitely like get to me especially because I already have a hard time keeping track of characters like I'm very into you know um not third person POV because I really need to know who I'm talking to like who I'm seeing their eyes at it because I do have a hard time keeping track of characters especially when there's more than two so basically I feel like that's something that would like very much like bother me in the book and then on top of that I've heard that there's like no plot and that is why people basically like don't ever tell you an actual plot about what this series is about like all I know about it is that it's some sort of like bully romance of sorts but I don't actually know anything else about it and people never really tell you what it is actually about and that sounds very sketchy to me so Basically, those are, I think, are like the top few reasons why I've decided to pass up on this series. But again, who knows what's going to happen in the future. But either way, after that, um, I think the last book that I'm going to share with you for today's video is the Fall and Men series by Gianna Darling. So happens to be at one point, I did um, pre-purchase the entire series at once because I was very excited to read the series because it's like motorcycle, age gap, you know, dark romances. And then I read the first book and it was a love at first sight book. And I cannot tell you how much I hated that story, but I pushed myself through the entire thing because I've heard such good things about the series and I really wanted to get myself into it but I just could not and by the time that I finished that book and I found out like the second book in the series I think was like between a 17 year old girl and like a 40 something year old man and I'm like I'm into age gaps but that is a little bit much for me I basically decided to um you know unhaul the entire series and I don't think that I ever am going to go backwards on that decision and like ever rebuy them the only thing is is that I actually do already own Inked and Lies which is either like book four or book five in the series and that's only because I got gifted the book by like 
like one of like these book boxes thing that I was like being a rep for at the time. And so now I do own the book and I have also heard that that is the best book in the series. And for some odd reason, I feel like maybe I would give that one a shot, like just that one alone, but I don't even know if I'm going to do that. So basically I don't really ever plan on continuing on with this series, but book five might be the exception that I make in the future. But either way, with that said, that is all of the books that I wanted to share with you today that I find to be very popular books. I see them on my feed all the freaking time and I have zero interest and no plan on ever reading them in the future. So I'm curious to know your thoughts on the list that I made today and if you read any of these books and what you thought about them and if you agree with my reasoning for not reading them or not or anything like that. Basically, leave me a comment down below because I'd love to continue this conversation that I've had with myself for the past 20 minutes. But either way, with that said, if you did enjoy watching this video, then please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you're not currently subscribed because I would really appreciate it. But either way, I appreciate you watching this video. So thank you for taking the time to do that. And either way, with that said, until next time, enjoy reading.